So I made a couple of videos on this channel already, but I don't think I introduced myself properly. So, hi, my name is Rafał. I haven't been really using many nicknames in my life. I work as a programmer in a AAA game company in Poland. There aren't many AAA game studios here, so you'll probably guess which one. I live in Poland, but it kinda sucks here recently. So I'm planning to move to Canada sometime this year. I always loved gaming and creating games, but when you're working on a big AAA game title, you don't really feel that much involved in any of the decisions. So I make games in my own time, as a hobby. At least I'm trying to. I know a thing or two about coding, but I still have a lot to learn about billion other skills needed to create a game. But I really like learning, so that's fine. Some time ago I released my first self-made game. It's a hyper-casual mobile game set in space. You can check it out on both Android and iOS if you want to. The thing is, it was a 2D mobile game, so it wasn't really that hard to create a good art for it. I always wanted to make a proper 3D game. I don't really think I'm ready to create the game I want to make. So I decided to dedicate my time to learning all the different aspects of game development, using smaller projects as opportunities to learn. I want each project to kinda focus on a single aspect of game development, like animation, gameplay, design, rendering, music and stuff like that. Since I'm working with many talented people, I am lucky to be able to just go to a person that master a skill in his or her game dev career and simply ask my newbie questions. And once I digest that, I can share that knowledge with you. Win-win scenario. For my first project in this devlog series, I want to create and release a fully playable 3D game with cool gameplay and aesthetics. The number one rule for this project will be I will create as many assets as I can myself, without grabbing them from the internet or buying them on the asset store. So as I mentioned, I want to create a 3D game, but I'm very much still a newbie when it comes to 3D modeling. I'm still learning that, but for now, I think I might know a solution. Pixel art. I mean, voxel art. You see, with all the respect for pixel art and artists creating it, I mean really, pixel art can sometimes be amazingly detailed and some artists create straight out masterpieces. I think for beginner artists, pixel art can be sometimes easier to start with. And since I'm thinking in three dimensions for this game, I can stick to voxel art, so it should be easier to start with than a usual 3D modeling. Voxel art is very similar to building with Legos, so I think it's just hard enough for my tiny Polish brain to comprehend. I started by getting familiar with creating voxel 3D models. I chose a program called Magica Voxel, which I can really recommend. Modeling with it feels really intuitive, just like playing with Legos or with your Willy if that's what you did as a child. Do know, I played with Legos. I created my first voxel model just to try things out. I was watching a new Kitaboga kit. Kid Boga video. By the way, I have no idea how you should pronounce this channel's name. So without much thought to it, I created him in a tuxedo. Because why not? It turned out okayish, but that's not exactly the style I want to go with for this game. I want something more neonish and darker. I browsed through some really cool voxel environments I found and created a small city block area that would match what I have in mind a bit more accurately. For some reason though, after importing my environment to Unity, there were no windows nor many details I made. And even though I live in Poland and there's usually not many reasons to look out your window if you don't want to get depressed, I like my buildings to have windows. That's just what buildings do and I think it should stay this way. After playing with it for a while, it turned out that for whatever reason, Unity won't understand block cutouts if they are the same color as the rest of the model. Weird, but I'll have to keep that in mind if I want to stick to the Magica voxel. After getting through this minor issue, I made some glowing blocks and placed them inside the window cutout, so it looks like there is someone inside. Now it was time to create a real character for the game. I played around some more and decided to go with robots. I can make some cool and abstract designs for them, without having to stick to humanoid shapes. 
And the fact that I suck at creating humanoid shapes is totally not a reason here. I made a cute flying kinda robot, which immediately worked much better for my concept. His face would basically be a screen that would display his emotions. I tried giving him a bit more space for mouth, but it didn't really work, so my little guy can forget about his career in toothpaste commercials. I also tried giving him brows, but it really didn't fit either, so not many ways to express your emotions, little guy. Don't look at me like that. God made you this way. I worked some more on my environment, trying to create some more details to my road, along with moody lanterns and sidewalk. I think I'll change it more later, but for now I think it looks okay. After that, I imported my little flying fellow onto the scene and gave him a simple idle animation with blinking eyes and looking around. This immediately made him look much more alive and believable. As cute as he is, I'm not sure if my flying fellow looks heroic enough to be a main character for the game. I mean, if you disagree, just tell me. Oh, I forgot, you don't have mouth. I'll just assume you agree. So I created a more likely candidate. This time I went for a more human-alike robot. I tried to make it so that he looks like he's wearing a shirt with rolled up sleeves, like a corpo guy trying to look like he was just fixing a car a moment ago because, you know, he's so manly. And yeah, he also has a see-through hole with his glowing heart inside, I'll explain why later. I kinda also tried giving him a priest collar so I can make a cool backstory around him, but it really didn't work, so I just added some coloring detail to his head. I will call him Robert! You know, cause he's a robe. Yeah, never mind. Now it was time to create some animations for this guy. That will obviously require my humanoid robot to have bones that I can later animate, so I imported him to Blender and created a simple armchair for him. And Blender decided to fuck me though. Yeah, this little innocent looking error almost drove me crazy. Here's Johnny! After a billion hours of googling, binging, yahooing, performing sacrifices to all that's holy and reading comments on forums, I knew that the issue is coming from the fact that many faces from the mesh imported from Magicka Voxel have the same vertex. I could fix it easily by cleaning up my mesh and merging vertices by distance but that makes my character look like a human body without skin. Sticks and stone. I wanted this game to be a little bit dark, but not a John Wayne's Gacy kind of dark, so that won't work. After way too many hours wasted on this issue, I brute forced a solution, performing some blender voodoo magic object duplication weight transformation thingy, but it worked. I was finally able to create animations for my guy. I created his running animation, which kinda make him look like me when my dad was getting home from the parent-teacher conference. Oh, and I literally stole eyes from the little guy I made earlier. So little bad, but the newer, better version of you needs them more now. But you know, if that's not okay, you can just tell me. You can just tell me using your mouth. The mouth that you don't have. I'll just assume that you're okay with that. After that, I created a simple character movement script that will support both keyboard and joystick input. I'm not sure about my release platform at this point. I also made a simple idle animation for my character, which is this robotic pistons going up and down, but it looks cool. Then I created a jumping and crouching animations, but I'm sure I will change it later. Those will stay for the prototyping period only, cause boy, let me tell ya, they are ugly. <laughs> now comes the part I try to explain why the hell I gave my character a gaping hole for his heart. Well, first of all, because I can. Second of all, I'm thinking of reusing a fun little mechanic I created for another game some time ago. But we don't talk about that project. The idea is that my character will be able to switch bodies with other robots by literally throwing his heart at them. So, in a way, a player is actually the heart, not the robot, and robot is simply a walking mech controlled by it. 
which is kinda how us humans work as well if you think about it. We're just a living consciousness inside a bloody fleshy robot that we control. But enough of nightmares for now, let's just talk about the game. I created an animation cycle for the hard throwing mechanic along with the mechanic itself. I made it so that you can use the right joystick to take your heart out, aim it at another robot and throw it. That will cause you to change bodies. And of course, I wouldn't be me if I didn't also create a bit more fucked up thing like a beating heart animation. And now for the general theme for the gameplay. Have you seen Chef? I mean Chef the video game. Overcooked. Overcooked is an amazing party game in which you team up with your friends to cook food and destroy your relationships. The game features this well thought out mechanic for creating dishes. Each meal has ingredients and step you need to follow to cook it. So for example, if you want to make a pancake, you need to mix flour with egg and chocolate, then blend it and then fry it. Want a burger? Fry some meat, slice a potato, slice some lettuce and put it all in a bun. Simple yet genius. I'm gonna borrow this mechanic. I wanna create overcooked but with guns. So instead of creating dishes, you'll be creating weapons and turrets to fight off enemy waves. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I'm planning on putting a lot of cool stuff onto this channel in the future. See you in the next video in which hopefully I'll focus on creating a vertical slice for this project. Bye!